Hi guys, this is Nilesh from IDZO. Today let's look at the skyline problem. We'll solve this problem in time complexity of n log n. So what is the skyline problem? A city's skyline is the outer contour of the silhouette formed by all the buildings in that city when viewed from a distance. Let's look at some examples to get a clear understanding. In this first example, if we have only one building, then the skyline for that would look like this. Let's say we had two buildings present. Then in that case, our skyline would look like this. The skyline has the outer boundaries for these two buildings present in it and a horizontal line starting from 9 and ending at 13 which connects these two boundaries. This line indicates the presence of ground between these two buildings. Now let's look at an example where buildings seem to overlap when viewed from a distance. Note that in this example, part of blue building between 5 to 9, between 5 to 9, is excluded from the skyline. That is because we are interested in only the outer contours of the buildings. Now in this slightly more complicated example, let's try to draw skyline for this set of buildings. So it will start from 2, go like this, then this part will be included, then we will go vertically, then this part, then this part is included, and finally this horizontal line segment and this vertical line segment. You can confirm that the skyline that we just drawn and this skyline are same. Similarly, for this set of buildings, our skyline would start from 13, go vertically, then this horizontal line segment, this vertical line segment, this part and finally this part, right? Again note that line segment between 12 to 13 is also part of skyline indicating the presence of ground between these two sets of buildings. Now let's define key points for this skyline. These key points mark the start of the horizontal line segments in this skyline. For every horizontal line segment, we have one key point defined. This key point marks the start of first horizontal line segment. This marks the start of the second line segment and so on. Finally, the key point at 17 marks the end of the skyline. Now if you notice, these key points are actually sufficient to describe a given skyline. With these ideas in place, now let's look at expected input and expected output for this problem. In this given input array, every array that is array 2, 9, 10, then array 3, 6, 15 and so on, describes the position of a building and its height. So array 2, 9, 10 indicates that blue building starts from 2, ends at 9 and has height of 10. Similarly, this array of 3, 6, 15 indicates that this particular red building starts from x is equal to 3, ends at x is equal to 6, though that is not visible here, and has got height of 15. Same is the case for all other arrays. Now let's look at the output format. In this output, array 2, 10, then array 3, 15 and so on, basically indicate the position of key points of skyline. So array 2, 10 maps to this particular key point present at x is equal to 2, y is equal to 10. Then array 3, 15 indicates this particular key point at x is equal to 3, y is equal to 15, right? Therefore, to conclude, in input, we get the positions of buildings and their heights and we have to output the skyline in terms of key points. In another example, let's say we have input 2, 9, 10, that is, our building starts from 2, ends at 9 and has got height of 10 then the output should be these two key points. First key point that is 2, 10 indicates the start of the horizontal line segment and second key point 9, 0 that is this key point indicates the end of skyline. Now let's look at couple of ways to solve this problem. In the first approach, the first step is we mark key points for each given building. We can mark these key points by simply marking end points of a diagonal running from top left to bottom right for each building. Note that in the first step, the key points that we need to mark are independent of other buildings. So for this blue building, our first key point would be this and second key point would be this. So first key point is at 2, 10 and second key point is at 9, 0, right? Similarly for this red building, first key point would be at top left corner that is 3, 15. Second key point would be somewhere here at 6, 0. After the completion of this first step, we would have marked key points for all these buildings, right? So this is key points for blue building, 
these are the key points that is 3 comma 15 and 6 comma 0 are key points for red building and so on now the second step of this approach is for each marked key point if there are buildings with more height that overlap with it then we change the key points y coordinate to height of the tallest overlapping building let's look at an example for this particular step for this particular key point located at 5 comma 12 the red building overlaps with it and its height is more than the key points y coordinate in that case what we do is we simply change the y coordinate for this particular key point to the height of tallest overlapping building so height of tallest overlapping building that is red building is 50 we change the y coordinate for this particular key point to 15 therefore this key point would be shifted to here right similarly for this particular key point located at 6 comma 0 there are two buildings that overlap with it first building is this blue building which has got height of 10 and second building is this green building which has got height of 12 now what we need to do is change this point's y coordinate to the height of the tallest overlapping building that would be green building so this point's y coordinate would be changed to 12 therefore this point will be shifted to here right after executing step number two for all these key points the key points would be placed like this the third step of this approach is to remove the redundant key points so by redundant key points i mean the points which are not necessary to describe a skyline so if you look at key points such as say key point at 5 comma 15 then key point at 9 comma 12 these key points are not necessary to describe a skyline therefore we can remove these points and after removal of these redundant points we will be left with only these points note that by joining these key points we will be able to draw the complete picture of the skyline for this set of buildings so after joining these key points we will be getting this particular skyline now for the approach that we have just seen let's try to analyze the time complexity now if you notice in this approach we need to look at position of each building for each critical point that makes the time complexity of this approach order of n square where n is total number of buildings now let's try to see if there is any better approach to solve this problem turns out that there is an approach which uses march sort like procedure to solve this skyline problem it runs in time complexity of n log n in this approach we basically need to merge the given two skylines but how can we do that let's look at an algorithm which describes the merge procedure for given two skylines the first step of this algorithm is we compare key points of skylines starting from leftmost end so we are having two skylines a white skyline which starts from 2 and ends at 13 and a yellow skyline which starts from 3 and ends at 15 now for the first step we need to choose the key points at leftmost end so those would be key point at 2 comma 5 and key point at 3 comma 15 now in the second step we choose the key point from the selected key points which has lesser of x values now it can be seen that we need to choose the key point from the white skyline because it has lesser of x values therefore after the completion of second step this key point will be selected the selected key points are added to the merged skyline now before adding the chosen key point to the merged skyline we need to execute the step number three that is if y value of chosen key point is less than last seen height of other skyline then we need to update the key points y value to last seen height of other skyline so in this case other skyline would be this yellow skyline and for both the skylines we start with last seen height of 0 y value for this selected key point is 5 which is greater than 0 0 was the last seen height of this yellow skyline therefore we don't need to update the y value for this selected key point before adding it to the merged skyline the next step in this algorithm is we just need to proceed to the next key point of the chosen skyline so the chosen key point was from white skyline therefore we proceed to the next key point of the white skyline we need to repeat above steps till both skylines are completed therefore we jump to step number one in step number one now we now compare the key points which are pointed by these two arrows in the next step we choose the key point which has lesser of x values 
As can be seen, the key point from the yellow skyline now has lesser of x values. Therefore, we select this key point. Once this key point is selected, we jump to step number 3. In step number 3, we note that y value of this selected key point is 12 and last seen height of the other skyline that is white skyline was 5. We basically update the last seen height of the white skyline after we select the key point 2,5. The last seen height of white skyline would be updated to 5 which is not greater than y value of the selected key point for the yellow skyline. Therefore, we don't need to do anything in step number 3 and we jump to step number 4 that is we proceed to the next key point of the chosen skyline. The chosen skyline was yellow skyline for this case. Therefore, we proceed to this key point. We again jump to step number 1. We compare the key points pointed by these two arrows. We choose the one having lesser of x values. In this case, key point from the white skyline has lesser of x values. Therefore, we select that key point. Once we select this key point, we jump to step number 3. Now note that last seen height of other skyline that is yellow skyline was 12 that was updated when we selected this particular key point and 12 is definitely greater than the y value for this selected key point. Therefore, we update the y coordinate for this selected key point and as a result this key point is shifted here. Now we jump to step number 4 that is proceed to next key point from the chosen skyline. So last selected key point was from white skyline therefore we jump to next key point from the white skyline that would be this particular point. We again jump to step number 1. We compare these two key points pointed by these two arrows. We choose the one having lesser of x values that would be this key point from the white skyline. In the third step we compare the y value of this key point with the last seen height of the yellow skyline. The last seen height of the yellow skyline is still 12 which is greater than y value for this particular key point which is 10. Therefore, we change the y coordinate for this key point to 12. Now we jump to step number 4. We simply proceed to next key point of the chosen skyline that would be white skyline. We again jump to step number 1 to compare these two key points pointed by the arrows. We choose the one having lesser of x values. Now the key point from the yellow skyline has lesser of x values. Therefore we choose that point. Now once this key point is selected, we jump to step number 3. At this point note that y value of this selected key point is 5 which is less than the last seen height of other skyline that is white skyline. Last seen height of white skyline would be 10 at this point. Therefore. We update the y value for this selected key point to 10 and we jump to step number 4. We basically proceed to the next key point from the yellow skyline. So after completion of step number 4 we need to compare these two key points. At this step we compare these two key points and in the second step we choose the one having lesser of x values. Key point from the white skyline has lesser of x values therefore that point is chosen. We jump to step number 3. Now note that y value for this key point is 0 and the last seen height of the other skyline would be 5. Therefore y value for this selected key point is updated to 5 now. We jump to next step. So there are no key points left from the white skyline. Therefore we select the remaining key point from the yellow skyline. Once we select this key point we jump to step number 3. We see if the y value of this selected key point is less than last seen height of white skyline. The last seen height of the white skyline is also 0. Therefore, we don't need to update the y coordinate for this particular key point. At this point, we are done with all the key points from both the skylines. Therefore, we don't need to repeat the steps and we jump to step number 6. As we have discussed earlier, the key points which are not necessary to describe the skyline are redundant key points. In this step, we just remove these redundant key points. So redundant key points would be these two points, right? So we remove these points. After removing the redundant key points, the merged skyline would look like this. Now let's look at the corner case. Now in this case, what happens if the x coordinates of the key points that we are comparing are same? 
so if x values of the both key points are same then what we do is we choose the one with higher of y values and we also skip step number four that is we don't now need to compare the y value of the selected key point with the last seen height of other skyline and instead of advancing the key point for only the selected skyline we now advance key points for both skylines so in step number three we choose this particular key point we don't need to update the y value for this key point and we proceed to the next key points for both skylines so this particular key point is selected y value is not updated and we have proceeded to next key point for both skylines now let's look at the code which implements this algorithm this algorithm runs in n log n time it takes input as building array for this particular example building array would be 2 where the building starts then 9 where the building ends and height of the building that would be 10 now this low and high arguments indicate the lower and higher boundaries for this building array for this particular example both low and high values will be equal to 0 now if low is greater than high then the input is not valid we return the empty skyline list if low is equal to high that is there is only one element present in the building array as is the case for this particular example all we need to do is we mark the key points for the building so before marking the key point we extract this x1 that would be 2 then x2 that would be 9 and then height of the building that would be 10 and we mark the two required key points by using element 1 and element 2 and we return the skyline which is created by using these two key points now if there are more than one buildings present in the input then we use this code block where we recursively divide the input buildings and obtain the smaller skylines and then finally merge these skylines to get the final skyline now note that this particular code block is very similar to the merge sort procedure now let's look at the merge skylines function this merge skyline function implements the algorithm that we discussed in previous slides it takes arguments as two skylines skyline list lower and skyline list higher and until the key points from one of the skylines are exhausted what it does is it starts from leftmost end of both skylines stripe 1 and stripe 2 are two key points it compares the x coordinate for both the key points and selects the one having lesser of x values so in this case key point 1 has lesser of x values therefore that key point is added to the merge skyline but before doing that it compares the y value of the selected key point with the last seen height of the other skyline so last seen height of the other skyline would be h2 and y value of the selected key point would be this stripe 1 of 1 if this condition holds true then what it does is it updates the y value of the selected key point to h2 now note that once the key point from the first skyline is selected it also updates the last seen height of the first skyline to the y coordinate of the selected key point that is stripe 1 of 1 and finally it moves to the next key point for this particular skyline now in the next part of this code this else if condition is basically if the x coordinate of the key point from the second skyline is less than x coordinate of the key point from the first skyline then we execute this block now this else block basically handles the corner case that we discussed if x coordinates of the key points that we are comparing are same then what we do is we choose the one with greater of y values right we update the last in height for both the skylines and instead of advancing only for the selected skyline we now advance the key points for both the skylines and once all the key points are completed and added to this skyline merged what we do is we remove the redundant key points so this particular while block takes care to remove the redundant key points from the merged skyline that we obtained and once the redundant key points from this merged skyline are removed we return this merge skyline to the calling procedure. I hope the algorithm and code explanation was clear. Please let us know if you have any queries or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and cheers.